God has given me something that is going to change the world. A true free energy device that keeps batteries consistently charged. It took me several months to find him, but when I did, it blew my mind. So here is the deal. You remember that video about Maxwell Chikumbutsu's infinite energy car? Well, a ton of you asked the question, why didn't he just patent it? But you guys are smart. That's exactly what I wanted to know. But when I started digging, oh, I saw something much more bigger than a rejection of a patent. In this video, we are going to see why Chikumbutsu's innovation was not given a patent by the US Patent Office, but we are going to see the possible impacts that this is going to create. Of course, it's going to have a very high impact, so be my guest. I want you to watch this clip. It's a time that I explain on my Facebook page so that people could understand how the laws, the patent laws work. They are patents which are not uh, patentable but being patents because of some issues. Good example, you can invent something that will promote monopoly. Automatically, it's not patentable. You can invent something that is novel. It's new, but this thing can cause harm to people. It's not patentable. Our technology was classified as a technology that violates some laws of physics because patents examiners are guided by the natural laws so they said you are violating the law of energy and thermodynamics this is not directly proportional so it's not industrial applicable <laughs> because it is reversing everything we have to revisit science and change those laws yes it is working but because yes. it's doing that <laughs> we have to relook everything yeah, re relook everything we have to dismantle everything then we start afresh so it's not patentable so they some they classify it as a perpetual motion device that is why we delayed to be out we're trying to find best ways of doing it of taking it to the market later on we decided that the best way is to have industrial designs just like coca-cola did they protected their recipe it's not patented but they just uh, kept it secret so we we, 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 we decided to go that route and the uh, it took 70% of our components in the microsonic energy device. We made those components, uh, we put them under trade secrets, meaning to say that we don't disclose much the formula on how those components are made. The materials that we are using will remain classified. Mm. Yeah, so that was the challenge that we faced. Yeah, it uh, affected a lot because uh, I will give a very good example that uh, this is something that. Uh, we have experienced. For example, you want to license a company. A company come and say, we see that this thing is working. We want a, a, a manufacturing license or whatever. Mm -hmm. But when you don't have a patent, they don't have a guarantee. They don't have a guarantee that it, it, they will remain in control. So it, it became a challenge to, to license companies. It became a challenge also to get like funding from uh, financial institutes a good example there's a time in south africa a certain bank was giving a uh, funding for new and renewable energy our technology even though it was working demonstrated that it is what was working but here is where things get really concerning when we refuse to patent revolutionary technology some pretty serious things can happen first off and this is huge without patent protection Inventors lose the right to exclusively protect and develop their technology. Think about this for a moment. You create something very amazing and anyone can potentially copy it and reproduce it the moment it's out there. But it gets even worse when inventors from developing countries can't get patent protection. They won't be able to attract major investors. Why? Because investors want protection on their investments. You kind of see where this is going? No pattern means no major funding. And here is the real troubling part. This can lead to what experts call brain drain. Brilliant inventors and innovators might feel forced to leave their home countries 
taking their talents elsewhere and this has happened before. Chikumbutsu that you see in this video, the same Chikumbutsu we are talking about, had once left. That was brain drain. He had once left for the US and that's when he was poisoned with his teammate. His teammate lost his life but he struggled, he managed and survived and was called back to Zimbabwe by his president. So brain drain is a reality when we talk about brain drain, some people think that you just want to say things. It happens. In my community, I know so many people that have left with incredible talents to the UK, to the US, to Germany, many different places because they want to go and further their innovations. Now, history is full of revolutionary ideas that got buried because they couldn't get patents. Some of them we might never know about. And that's not just sad, it's potentially devastating for human progress. Think about it. What if Chikumutsu's technology could really solve our energy crisis? What if it could bring power to remote African villages or revolutionize transportation globally? By rejecting the patent, we might be delaying solutions to some of humanity's biggest challenges. But there is an even bigger picture here. When we block patents from certain regions, we are essentially saying Technology can only come from certain places and that is entirely wrong. It's not true. Many people have made documentaries explaining how the pyramids were built in Africa but up to today I can tell you that nobody knows how the pyramids were built. But because we don't know how the pyramids were built, does it justify the fact that the pyramids don't exist? Now, Chikumbutsu did something very smart. Instead of giving up, he decided to tend to trade secrets. But here is the catch, trade secrets have their own problems. With a pattern, your invention becomes public knowledge, allowing others to build on your technology. But with trade secrets, that knowledge will be lost forever. Would you blame him? I would say no because he has no choice. What is he going to do? Now think about it, what if the inventor, well, you know, takes the technology to the grave. This means humanity would lose a groundbreaking technology of this magnitude forever. And in a world facing climate change challenges like this, this isn't a gift we want to lose. So while the major western streams, the CNN, the BBC, RFE, why have they not talked about this technology? Why are they interested only in showing the bad part of Africa? Why are they interested in talking about war in Rwanda, war in Congo? Why are they interested in talking about floods, droughts in different places? Now this is Africa. This is what is happening in Africa. Why do they not show the good part of Africa? Why are they not showing Abuja, Nairobi? Nairobi is a very beautiful city and I'm thinking of going to Nairobi sometime this year. Why are they not showing that part of Africa? Why are they not showing this? Good invention that is happening. Now let's consider that this is fake. What is not fake? Now Trump talks all the time about fake news. He recently sanctioned South Africa based on unfounded information. That is fake but it was broadcasted all over the world. So what are we talking about fake here? Many people in the West, they come and comment on the comment section that says that this is a scam. This is crazy. In Africa, we see technology from the West. We call it witchcraft. Yes, people call it witchcraft. Now, this is not in a bad way. It is in a good way. Like, it's wonderful. It is witchcraft. But why is it that technology that comes from Africa isn't seen even as half of that? Why is it that we don't have the right to innovate? Why is it that we are not given the right to innovate? Why is it that when we innovate, we are not considered as innovators? Why? Chikumbutsu needs to be protected. If you believe Chikumbutsu needs to be protected, write it in the comment section. He needs protection. Write, he needs protection. Write it in the comment section. Of course, he does need protection because of groundbreaking technology. Coming again from a black, from an African, the world couldn't handle it. He suffered and almost gave up and was brought back to his country by the Zimbabwean president. I say bravo to the Zimbabwean president for, for taking this guy's technology because if not, for him, we wouldn't have been seeing these cars. So yeah, maybe the question isn't really whether Chikumbutsu's invention works. Maybe it's about what we lose as a society when we let 
institutional barriers block innovations from unexpected places. My name is Asom Edris and you are watching Africa Today. If you haven't subscribed or liked this video, I don't know what you're waiting for. I will see you in my next video very soon. Ciao.